Salams, you're watching News Click. We're in Imphal, where uh, in the state of Manipur, uh, of course, where from uh, May 3rd, the evening of May 3rd onwards, uh, violence has continued unabated in the state. Uh, the narrative that is being told is that uh, the war that is currently on is between two factions, the dominant community in the state, the Maite, and the Kuki, which com uh, comprise about 10% of the state's population. Uh, it has also often been mentioned that this entire uh, period of violence began with a peace rally, uh, sorry, a uh, uh, rally organized by the All Tribal Students Union Manipur, uh, from where the violence actually uh, kicked off and then has now engulfed the state. Uh, a lot of these matters are being challenged in court. A lot of the narrative is being challenged in court. A lot of the assumptions that are being made through various uh, media organs uh, are being challenged in court. And joining us today, fortuitously because of internet issues, uh, he's been asked to appear uh, in Imphal, so he is in town. Uh, senior advocate uh, in the Supreme Court, uh, Dr. Colin Gonzalez, as well as founder of the Human Rights uh, Law Network, is here. Um, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. I'm sure there's a lot for you to get through, a lot for you to compute as well, a lot of people to meet. Uh, if we can start with the chronology in terms of uh, what has been happening uh, in the courts. And then we'll talk further about your understanding of the situation on the ground because you're here as well. Well, what I'll try and do is give you a dispassionate statement on the factual situation. Right. I'll also cover what the Mai Tai side is saying so that I'm not, uh, you know, like arguing a matter before you, but I'll give you what both sides are saying for you to decide which way you want to go and so on. So, well, it starts with the single judge of the High Court, who happens to be the Chief Justice, making an order to the state government to recommend to the central government that the Mai Tai should be included in the scheduled tribes list. Now, that was an astonishing order according to us. The Mai Tai is, of course, say it's perfectly legal and perfectly valid. And we rely on one or two judgments of the Supreme Court, like Millen's case, which says that when it comes to the inclusion or the exclusion of a tribe from that scheduled tribes list, it is purely between parliament and the state government and the central government, mm. and courts have no role to play. So it gave rise to, as you know now, it gave rise to killings right across Manipur. I suppose anyone, not just a lawyer appearing for the cookies, but anyone would say it was the most unfortunate development in the state to happen. Mm. But it's not just the order which causes the, the calamity and the crisis. It's the groups who are taking advantage of that order to create absolute chaos in the state. Anyway, so that was the order passed by the single judge. The tribal unions immediately filed the appeal before the division bench, which will be heard at some stage. Mm. And they say two things. They say, first, when you pass that order, you should have heard the tribals, because the tribals are affected by that order. Right. And you didn't hear us. You passed the order without hearing. Mm. And secondly, like I said earlier, the Constitution bench of the Supreme Court has said that the courts have no business interfering with issues like this. Mm. So that is spending. In the meanwhile, an interesting development takes place. And I'm just giving it to you factually. Yeah. Well, I don't want to give you a one-sided right. view of the yes. whole thing. Yeah. So now the Mai Tai side comes to court telling the learned single judge that he made a mistake by directing the state government to make a recommendation. Now, it's a surprising thing to say, because that's exactly what the tribal side said. And incidentally, in all this, I think there were some comments made at a higher level about whether this can be done or not be done. And now they tell the court, please change your order and say, don't say recommend, but pass an order to the state government mm. to tell the central government mm. to consider mm. what the Maitais are saying. Mm. So far, so good. Mm. To which the tribals say, right? 
All right, since you've admitted you're wrong on the first part, fine. But you are, you're asking for an order to consider the Mai Tai position. Yeah. It can't be done. It can't be done. This is what the tribals are saying, right? One, because the Mai Tai is the, the Kukis mm. are not a tribal in Manipur. They're not on the list of Manipuri tribals. The Mai Tais are not on that list. The cookies are, yes. The Mai Tais are not on that list. And to be a scheduled tribe means you must be part of the tribe, but you must be impoverished, mm. destitute, economically backward, education backwards. So. so you're not even on the tribal list. As far as backwardness is concerned, first of all, after independence, there's no attempt by the Mai Tais. This is what the tribal said. There's no attempt by the Mai Tais to have their name in that list. Some people say, tongue in cheek, mm. we'll have to see, that the Mai Tais felt offended yeah. by the scheduled tribes. Oh, I mean, yeah. Come on, we're not backward, mm. surely. And uh, I think anyone can say, even I, who, who's on the Kuki side, mm. I would say that Manipuri society is very proud that the Mai Tais have achieved so much yeah. Long you know, history. Long history is one thing. Yeah. But even in today's world, I mean, you, yeah. you control the valley, you, you're educationally forward, mm. you're economically forward, mm. you're politically dominant. Mm. So I think the Mai Tais... Culturally. Uh, <laughs> culturally. <laughs> yeah. Culturally. Yeah. So I think if there's one thing where the Mai Tais were right, was in this understanding that it's <laughs> terribly wrong for us to say, means the Mai Tais to say, that we are backward, we are suddenly not backward. And I think that initial reaction was correct. So when the Kalelkar committee, which was meant to revise the scheduled tribes list, mm. sat in 56, the Mai Tais didn't go. Tribes from all across the countries came, said, you know, you've left me out of the 1950 order, include me. But the Mai Tais didn't go. 65, when Lokur committee sat, and again, tribes from all across the country, yeah. hundreds of tribes went, the Mai Tais didn't go. Mm. And now they go to the high court and get consider my representation. I looked at the material. They've given material. And my senses from that material, I may turn out to be wrong. When they argue, they may prove me to be wrong. But from all that material, I could not find a single line, a single line showing that they are backward. Not a single line. The historical records are pre-British, uh, pre, pre-independence, I'm sorry. They're pre-independence. So British time, and even in British time, the writers, the authors are saying that this was a tribe they settled in the valley and they became dominant. Mm. So a dominant tribe will actually may even go out of the tribal list. Mm. The Mai Tais have gone out of the tribal list. Mm. And they certainly can't get, you know, accelerate, take a jump and get into the scheduled tribe. That's not possible. So this argument is taking place in, in the high court. Mm. But it could have been these sometimes, sometimes, an order of a court can cause the kind of havoc, you know, that could have been avoided mm. if a simple thing like listening to the affected party, for God's sake. Mm. It's a principle, you know, of law that you listen to the other yeah. side. And look at the killings and the burnings of houses and burning of churches. Mm. There's another group behind this, so I don't want to blame the High Court at all. Mm. The High Court made a mistake, you made a mistake, that's fine. Mm. But who are these killer organizations mm. behind the killings? Right. So, so, uh, so, so coming to that, the, 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 the solidarity march, the peace march that was organized and, and where, where uh, one side says the violence began. Uh, because in those areas where the Kuki are in a larger section of the population, uh, Methe houses and Methe shops and, and, and such were targeted. And then uh, on the other side are these organizations that you, you are referring to that unleashed 
large scale violence in the Imphal Valley, which is the biggest population center in the state by far. So how do you view the balance between this, these two completely differing uh, narratives? Yeah, well, that's what, uh, that's, that's where people like you come in, news click, come in, you know, because you have to really separate the rubbish from the truth. And this is, a, this is an area where politics plays a very big role. And the party at the center and the party in power in Manipur have started a narrative of falsehood, of lies, mm. open lies. Mm. And it's important for journalists not to go by the surface story and to dig in deep and get the truth. As a lawyer, we try to collect the evidence and we put it in into our documents in court. But I think you have a very important role to play here. If you look at the deaths, let's look at, first of all, who's the victim? Who's the assailant? Right? And according to us, and again, we could be wrong, the number of cookies killed are touching approximately 100. Confirmed numbers. Yeah, and when I say this, it means we've gone back to the village, mm. we've talked to the cookie friends, they have the name of the person, which we have the name, the place where the, the killings took place, so 100, right? And I think we'd be, by and large, absolutely correct. I try to get the Mai Tai deaths, but we are not able to get, but my enlightened guesswork is, it'll be perhaps about 25, mm. 25 Mai Tai deaths. Mm. Now, this has to be taken with another figure, which is, how many of them are civilian deaths of Mai Tais and how many are the militarized organizations, communal, both communal and heavily armed groups who are carrying out the killing. And my sense is roughly half-half. So out of 25, maybe you'll get 10, 11, 12 who are civilians who are killed, which is most unfortunate, mm. which is very unfortunate. Mm. I may appear for the cookies, but a death is a death. Yeah. Right? And as far as these two organizations are concerned, mm. I won't repeat their names now at this moment, but it's widely reported in the newspapers. Mm. And they've been so bold as to come on Karantapa's <laughs> interviews and so on. So I would say out of 25, about 12, 13, 14 are the combatants, assailants, mm. and the rest are civilians. Mm. Now, if you just look at this, 12 civilians as compared to 100 civilians, mm you know who the victim is. So that's the first thing in a, in a so-called clash. Mm -hmm. And that word is very neutral, right? Yeah. Clash. clash. What does clash mean, really? It's an attack and a defense, right? So if 12 or 10 are the Mai Tai dead and 100 are, you know the, who the victim community is. Mm. And I think there's no doubt in all this, mm. you know? And then to add to that, you have the villages burnt. Mm which we've got the names and the places, and there are roughly maybe 80 plus mm. or 100 plus villages burnt, small, small mm. groupings burnt to the ground, mm. and then churches burnt, 125, 135 churches burnt to the ground. So they are the victim community, they are the assailant. Mm. Now the assailants are not particularly, you know, ashamed of what they did. Mm. Communalism in our country has a long history. And we've had many communal clashes. I was, I saw the Bombay clash in the 1990s. Mm. We saw the Gujarat communal clash in 2000, 2002. Mm. And so on, we've seen communal. So we have a long history and it goes into a particular pattern. Mm. And, uh, Nobody now, what's different now, is that they are proud of what they do. They were ashamed of what they did earlier, but they are proud of what they do today. They're very proud of killing. And I think the central government and I think our prime minister and our home minister, you know, very, I mean, accomplished people. The prime minister won election after election after election, but that doesn't absolve you of the crimes against humanity. You might be a very good politician. You might even have the love of some section mm. of the people. 
and you have won elections like other prime ministers have not. So I acknowledge that. Mm. I acknowledge that. But does that absolve you from a crime? The highest possible crime in international law, mm. which is a crime against humanity. It does not. So they're so proud that on Karantapa's program, one of these guys, the head of the organization said, tell the cookies. We are capable of and we will annihilate them. Here we go. What bigger crime, hate speech, can you have than that? Particularly when it's followed up with killings. You do exactly what you say you would do. And the other organization, we've got photographs, you know, of them with their automatic weapons and aiming at targets and you know, so proud of their weaponry and their ability yeah. to kill and, you know, kill the cookies, kill the cookies, only the cookies, kill the cookies. I mean, what has India descended to? What kind of savage country are we? I know the Prime Minister has gone to America where he's used the word democracy ten times, you know. And we are proud of our democratic traditions, but is India a democracy today? And I think the sooner the average Indian or the average citizen of the world understands mm. that India is certainly not democratic at all. Mm. It's just talk. It's just showmanship. It's just rhetoric. I think we are going through one of the most dangerous times. Manipur is not Manipur alone in terms of its impact and effect. Mm. No, of course. Manipur not. tells yeah. you what the what India has become. In that sense, um, and maybe we can talk a bit more about the legal aspect first before coming to side, sort of your broader understanding of the scenario. Uh, so, so what exactly are, are 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 you now seeking from the court? If you are saying that we have enough evidence of this militarization, these organizations. Uh, are you, do you, it, has it come down to the court uh, requiring to issue specific instructions for these sort of people who, like you have said, have very publicly talked of their role in the violence uh, for action to be taken against them? Well, uh, to my mind, it's the most important demand that you register complaints, FIRs, against these persons, mm. all of them not just the leadership, but the membership as well. Mm. And you arrest them immediately. If there is no doubt in everybody's mind, mm. and I would say even the, the Mai Thais would <laughs> not agree publicly, but mm. they would be very proud of what their, what their communal groups have managed to do. Mm. We have to register complaints. Because even that elementary step of registering a complaint yeah. has not happened and you have to arrest. Mm. And I did say earlier and I'll say it again. Everybody says, what's the solution? Mm. The solution is so simple. Mm. If the police or a special investigation agency, because we can't rely on the Manipur police, if you have a genuinely independent agency mm. investigating, mm and arresting these persons, mm. the violence in Manipur will stop tomorrow. Mm. I have no doubt. Mm. Spineless people who kill innocent people, spineless. Mm. They get their courage from the fact that certain sections of the establishment, certain sections of the law and order, peacekeeping establishment in every state yeah. are on their side. Mm. And you take away that, they are absolute cowards who will take defenseless people, poor people, indigent people, mm. living in the hills and elsewhere, mm. and shoot them. Mm. There is a solution. Just arrest them mm. and it will stop. But does the chief minister want to do that? Mm. Or does he want to continue? Mm. Question mark. Mm. Does the home minister want to arrest people. You know, he's arresting people all across the country for terrorism, right? I mean, if a person speaks against the authorities, mm. you, get, you get arrested for terrorism. Mm. You know, UAPA, the terrorism statute, yeah. for speaking against, criticizing the government, yeah, yeah. and so on. Yeah. Is the Home Minister interested? Mm. 
in actually moving against? I don't think so. And is the man at the top interested? I don't think so. So we have a situation where the three functionaries, from the prime minister, the home minister, the chief minister, are they actually proud of what they've achieved? Are they actually agreeing with what has happened? Do they really want to stop it? Or are they thinking, which I think they are thinking, and I think there's an element of truth in this, it's the old-fashioned divide and rule between this section of the population and that section. Mm. Hammer the minorities, win over the majority, and win election after election. Mm. Maybe that formula may not work exactly in Manipur because the repercussions have been huge. Mm. But I think at the back of their minds, they see it as a political winning formulation. We've hammered them. Mm -hmm. So we presume, that means government will presume that all the Baitas will vote for us, mm -hmm. which I think may not turn out to be exactly correct. Mm. As we are seeing now on the ground, right, we are seeing a backlash against this political class yeah. Uh, yeah. by the people, by, led by some of these Mera Pai B and all who are angry. Uh, because like you were mentioning, well, of course, um, some of the deaths on the Mehtai side are those who belong to these groups. Uh, those who are not being able to, for example, sow paddy in the fields out of fear uh, of being attacked from the hills. And because they have been told that there is this possibility that any, at, any, at any point a sniper sitting up on the hill uh, will shoot you while you're out in your uh, field, uh, you know, doing, doing your work. And so we found the paddy crop uh, for next season, it's sowing time now, the work has not really begun. Uh, how, how do you see this sort of uh, panning out from a, a political point of view uh, or, or is that something that you don't want to get into? At this no, see, I understand what you're saying and I agree with what you're saying. But there's a world of a difference between being angry and not voting. Mm. Right? And I think the, the judgment call is this, mm. that whatever we've done and whatever problems have happened to the Maitai community, we believe that by us attacking the Kukis, mm. the Maitais will, as a bloc, vote for us. And so, well, what does it matter in Indian democracy? Mm. What does crime matter? What does killing matter? Mm. If we can win votes, that's, the, that's all that matters, mm. winning votes in elections. So maybe if that was the crude thinking mm. behind the attacks, and I can see no other reason for it, mm. then let's see, time will tell yeah, whether you're right. And we're also a long time away, I think, from elections in the state. Uh, uh, still another, I think, about four years to go, so, yeah. so a long, long way off. Um, any other aspects of, of the legal uh, side of things uh, now? What, what can we expect from the next hearing? Uh, or, uh, well, I just want to say I, I don't want to answer your question, but I want to say something of a general nature mm. linked to your question. Mm -hmm. I feel, and we've all known, that institutions in our country have been disintegrating. The institutions and democracy, the free press, you know, the entire education system, freedom of information, freedom of speech is disintegrating. Mm. And with the cookies, I feel that we have no one to turn to. See, I come from a background where my friends were in activism and they all scolded me saying, what is this belief that you have, <laughs> you know, in law and so on. Mm. Everyone knows that the legal system doesn't work. Mm. And for all these years, I fought against that saying, you know, come to the law. Mm. Use the law. Mm. Take recourse to the law. It may be a straw that you're clutching to, but it's a straw. Take it. And I feel today slightly ashamed of what I said. And I, who had so much hope in the institutions of democracy, I believe they are dying rapidly. And the cookies just feel, I mean, the killings just go on and on. Can you imagine the Supreme Court was kind enough 
to tell the central government, consider their grievances. Mm. Not twice, not once, but twice. Somewhere early May and somewhere in the middle of May. When we pointed out, listen, sir, this is what is going to happen. Mm. We know it's going to happen. Mm. And the court was so kind mm. that the court said, address their grievances. Mm. And the court was told, it's stopping, sir. In fact, it's already stopped for the last two days. <laughs> Nothing has happened. Yeah. And then killing, 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 killing. So the cookies feel, and I personally feel, that we have really nowhere to turn to. Mm. We feel that God has forsaken us, in a sense, you know. That, see, that feeling of abject futility yeah. in the processes of democracy. Mm. That's what Manipur signifies. Uh, and yet, uh, I, I suppose, interesting for uh, our uh, audience also to note that uh, you are still in court, you are still engaging with that process, uh, whereas uh, the same might not be said of uh, all sides. Uh, have you ever seen anything like this before in your time at the Human Rights Law Network where the chief minister, the, who's, like you said, voted in with a massive mandate, 50-plus uh, days of ongoing, uh, well, uh, whatever you want to call it, violence, uh, unable, unwilling, or in either case, has not had any conversations with the other side. Gujarat, classic model, classic model. No communal attack can take place in this country without the head of that area, that state, giving the orders to attack. If the police are told, if the police are told by any chief minister or prime minister, stop the violence, our police force can stop that violence in 24 hours. I have no doubt. Mm. And I have had senior police officers tell us, Colin, if we had a free hand, mm. any police force in any state will stop the violence in 24 hours. Mm. If it doesn't stop, it means the order to continue comes right from the top. Gujarat was that. Manipur is that. So what do you do when the heads of your, your governance is giving orders to kill? What hope can an Indian have? Why should young Indians stay in this country? I'm old, so I'm hanging around. You know? Mm. I really tell young people today, I said, if you can get out, get out. Young, idealistic people come to me. They want to work in law. They want to do social work. Yeah. I tell them, if you can get out, get out. Yeah. There is no hope. There is no future for you. There's no future for this country. I, I mean, it's interesting uh, what you're saying. Uh, we often hear this in, in the Northeast uh, that, uh, you know, th there is this politics of otherization, that India doesn't really care, uh, that on the one hand we want this idea of the union of India and everything, the democratic traditions and values that we want in theory. Uh, but when it comes to the Northeast, that completely goes out of the window. No, not exactly. But so, yeah, so no, 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 not exactly. <laughs> The country cares for the votes, not the people, they care for the votes. Mm. And to get that vote, mm. they must have people on their side. Mm. And in fact, this government has done quite a bit of improvisation in the Northeast and won elections here. Mm. The question is, what is the way in which you get the votes? Mm. Is it divide and rule? Mm. Is it by spreading hate? Mm. Is it by creating divisions? so that the minority may not vote for you, but the majority will, mm. then it's a model of communalism. Mm. You're winning election, but you're spreading hate. Mm. That's the model. But uh, the government is very good in the Northeast, central government. Good in the sense that they've mastered it's the British about. art of divide and rule. What the British did, mm. this government does ten times better. <laughs> Spectacular! The vision of the country and the winning of elections. Yeah. 
You know, we have also been here for quite some time and therefore are kind of cut off from the rest of the world because of the ongoing internet ban uh, and things like that. And eventually, hopefully, people in the state will get a chance to uh, watch this interview and, and hear your take on it. What do you make of, and, and we can do this in any sort of way that you like, one, how the media has been approaching uh, the, the situation in Manipur. And, 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 uh, and secondly, is there a narrative or an understanding that uh, this is somehow uh, a Hindu bastion in an area surrounded by Christian-dominated uh, states like, let's say, Nagaland or Mizoram? And, and that helps in the center kind of, uh, A, allowing some of these forces a freer hand than they normally would. Uh, and be also spending more resource then uh, in that uh, in the achievement of that objective. Yeah, let me answer your first question, which related to uh, remind me again. Ah, oh, sorry. So let me answer the first question, which related to the media. It's a collapse of the media. And I suppose this has much to do with corporate takeover of the television, of, of the newspapers, the sacking of secular journalists in the hundreds across the country, mm. and the takeover by corporate houses that, have, that are determined to crush yeah. freedom of speech. How was it done? And it's amazing that, you know, it's a, it's a, to me, it's somewhat new. First of all, you have a narrative of a clash. Mm. So in every report, day after day after day after day, the attack which is one-sided, starting with these two you know, armed groups against the Kukis, the tribals, right? A one-sided killing is converted into a clash. Mm. And the clash gives the story as if Two groups that have historically been at each other's throats mm. are fighting mm. and the poor prime minister of the country doesn't know what to do and the poor home minister of the country doesn't know what to do. Mm. He'll try his best to stop it and the chief minister of course is presented with this unruly clash between two groups. Mm. I want to say that in all our pleadings we have not said a word against the Maitais. The Maitais and the Kukis have had their own struggles, sometimes pretty tough struggles. But the Maitais as a group are not the enemies of the Kukis. As a lawyer for the Kukis, I want to say it clearly, they are not our enemy. They are not the persons who en masse rise as a force and say, exterminate these people. Now we they're increasing. Plenty of evidence. Yeah, yeah, they're not our enemies. Yeah. It's these two groups that happen to be Maitais, mm. but they are paramilitary kind of civil society groups organized by the state mm. who are killing the cookies, mm. not the general. And there are no attacks, mm. to my mind, there are no attacks mm. by the cookies mm. on the civilian Maitai population. Mm. So this entire conversation that is happening in, in the local newspapers today, just today, you might have seen uh, again a statement. What do you make of this narco terrorism and, and the fact that um, at least as far as the media narrative in the local press, and when I say local, I mean the Imphal press is concerned, uh, it always refers to attacks by kooky militants or attacks on the one side by village defense volunteers, that's the Mehte side, and cookie militants, uh, referring to perhaps uh, groups like the KNA and the KRA and other uh, groups under the, uh, the suspension of operations, Those, that group of people. What do you make, what is your argument or what is your sense on that? Well, it's like this. If you look at the Terrorism Act, the UAPA, six out of the seven terrorist organizations there are Maitai organizations. There's not a single cookie organization, I think, in that list. Mm. Secondly, there are the surrendered terrorists. There are surrendered, not terrorists, but surrendered whatever, persons who were involved in 
certain activities. Mil ah, militants is a better word to use. Those surrendered militants are in camps, and those camps are carefully monitored. So where the cookies are, the cookies remain where they are. And if a cookie goes out of that camp, finish, the accord is gone, right? So are the cookie milit these surrendered militants involved in these killings? Doesn't seem to be so. Doesn't seem to be so. Are these two Maithai militant armed groups involved? Seems a certainty. So that's as far as that is concerned. What else? The, uh, no, this, this whole na the Naku terrorism. Ah. Now see, if you want to get the cookies off their land for some reason, we'll go into that reason later. But if your idea is, if the if the these communal groups' idea is that we want to smash these cookies and take their land, mm. right? What better explanation can you have? That actually we are not interested in their land. Mm. We are interested in stopping poppy cultivation, right? Okay. Is poppy cultivation going on? Yes, it is. Is it going on on quite a scale? Yes, it is. Are the cookies involved? Yes, they are. But are other communities equally involved in poppy culture? Yes, they are. The whole of the Northeast. The whole of the Northeast is involved to some extent. At least I know in, um, in Manipur, there's poppy culture. That's not the real question to be asked. Who takes that poppy produce and sells it? Yeah. Who are the drug lords? That can't be done by poppy cultivators. Who are the drug lords in Manipur who are handling the entire poppy? Mm. You're, scolding, you're scolding the cultivator, mm. sometimes absolutely destitute cultivator, you know, working on wages that are maybe... You're blaming him for the drug problem, but who is the drug lord? And there was this uh, very enterprising young additional superintendent of police, Brinda, who wrote a confidential report to the present chief minister, mm. saying this is the connection between politicians and the drug lords. Mm. And that report we have asked for, saying give it to us, but that report I can guarantee will never be made public. Mm. Then there are stories abounding. That, you know, relatives, close relatives of very high politicians mm. in power today yeah. and former politicians in power once upon a time, mm. their relatives are drug lords. Mm. Everybody knows, everybody can see, everybody understands. Mm. Yeah, in but, in Paul is a small town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a small town. So what are we talking? We are talking about the drug lords accusing the poppy cultivators, okay. hey, you guys, we need to come and kill you because you're doing poppy cultivation. Mm. Yeah. When they are actually the whole, you know, organizers of the drug trade yeah. in Manipur. Yeah. And there's a case filed in the Supreme Court by persons affected by the drug trade, you know, for measures to be taken to stop this. The drug trade in Manipur is affecting Many, many young people, yeah. perhaps not just in Manipur, but the rest of India as well, mm. perhaps outside India as well. Yeah. So I think all of these issues, uh, Colin, are of course connected to, um, in many ways, at least, at least how far they have uh, been imbibed by the common people of the state, uh, down to the media, which is extremely powerful in Manipur today, particularly uh, in Maitelon, the, the local language, whether it's the newspapers or, or the radio. Uh, of course, the internet also had a role to play, but as of now, it's uh, not, not uh, in existence anymore. Uh, a big point in the media has been illegal migrants coming in from Burma uh, off the Kukichin sort of broader uh, tribal family uh, and how they are both the ones that are armed, the ones that are, uh, you know, responsible for deforestation, for for setting up new villages in, in reserved and protected forests uh, and, and, and therefore essentially 
threatening what, what the Mehte are defending, the territorial integrity of Manipur. Uh, what do you make of that argument? Or that, uh... Yeah, I think that was answered very well by Professor Swan, who is the head of, I think, political science in Hyderabad mm -hmm. University. Mm -hmm. And he looked at statistics of the growth of the population mm. in the uh, Maitai villages and the uh, Kuki villages. And he found that the rate of growth of the Kuki villages was less than the rate of growth of the Maitai villages. Mm. So these things must be answered scientifically mm. by reference to where did you get these figures from? When you say that people are migrating in large numbers, mm. What numbers are we talking about? Mm. And if they migrate in large numbers, mm. then you'll see it reflected in the village records. Absolutely. Because they come in, yep. let us say if this is true, mm. then they are permitted to have a plot of land, then they are permitted to build a house, mm. then their children go to school, mm. then when they get sick, they go to the hospitals. Okay. So these records will show you the growth in the population of a particular village. Mm. And going village by village, you'll get the exact statistics. Mm. Is there migration? I suppose there might be in migration. It's a porous border, I guess. It's so. a porous border and definitely people will come in. But is the migration of an alarming level that you feel it distorts the, the ratio in the population? Mm. It doesn't seem to be so at all. Mm. There doesn't seem to be any evidence mm. to show that this has happened. I think that is the answer to this. Yeah, in fact, uh, I mean, it's, I think it's the also reported in, the pa in yeah. yesterday's paper that the cabinet's own uh, Manipur State Government Cabinet Committee that looks at uh, this aspect has found around 2,000 in total uh, illegal yeah. migrants. So that, that pretty much... Uh, so that's minuscule. That's of, yeah, that's yeah, that's minuscule. So why are they saying this? Yeah. In migrants, we've got to stop them. Mm. Poppy cultivation, we've got to stop them. Mm. Why are they coming up with these things? Are they not simply excuses mm. to justify mm. a military-style attack on the tribals? Mm. That's the answer. Mm. That's the answer. All right. uh, finally, uh, Colin, you have to take this conversation forward because by all official accounts, I think uh, this mass-scale violence has already come to some kind of an end. Uh, I think the, the Union Home Minister uh, Amit Shah at the all-party meeting yesterday also said uh, uh, that since June 13 or so there has been no killing in, in Manipur. Uh, the Manipur police control room has said that most districts are now uh, normal. Uh, so moving forward on the cookie side since they are uh, who you are uh, representing, is there... Uh, what what is the demand? What, would they like to return to the places where they lived? Uh, is it even feasible that in the short term or, or even the medium term, that Imphal will see again uh, a sizable or any kind of cookie population? Well, though I received this news that the government says that the killings have stopped with a certain degree of uh, skepticism, I would be happy in this instance to be proved wrong and that the government is right. But I've heard this three times before. Mm. And I, after I heard these kind of statements mm. that the violence has stopped, large numbers were killed. Mm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure at all and I don't trust the government at all and I don't trust these statements at all. And it will be a huge tragedy if this lulls us into a sense of complacency which is that really government and the police have to do nothing because the fire has gone out by itself. Mm. So you do nothing mm. and then the killings start all over again. The killings will only stop if the assailants are arrested, like I said. And we are focusing on that. We want the assailants arrested and as long as they remain in society, can you imagine the killings stop? But this group of 200, 300 armed people remain in society, remain to train other people, remain to spread hate. Mm. Will it not erupt any day? Is it a permanent peace to have them like that? 
And can you sweep a kind of ethnic cleansing, ethnic cleansing of tribals under the carpet by saying, oh, the ethnic cleansing is over. <laughs> it's done. Sorry, sir. No, no, nothing has to be done. No action has to be taken. We've stopped the ethnic cleansing. <laughs> we need punishment. We need justice retribution. We need those guys to be hauled up before the courts, put in jail. Mm. Nothing else. All these promises I don't believe. We'll start again tomorrow. That's why our first demand is arrest these people. Our second demand is reconstruct the churches, reconstruct their homes, reconstruct the villages that were burned to the ground at the expense of the state. The Home Minister said, I'll, I'll pay 10 lakhs for those dead. Mm. So we have a hundred cookies dead. Mm. So I'm looking at a thousand lakhs, right? Mm. If my mathematics is okay. Mm. A thousand lakhs. Not a rupee paid. What's he waiting for? So pay the money, reconstruct the houses, yeah. do all that. Mm. That's what we are asking for in court. And we are watching, mm. waiting and watching because we are certain mm. the violence will start. We are certain. When the assailant is not punished, when the killer goes scot-free, it's a message sent out to the rest of this criminal world that as long as the powers that be are on your side, do what you like. And that's a fundamental breakdown in law and order. It can't be repaired by putting a band-aid and putting a stitching and so on. Can't be repaired. Once people with power think that I can kill those who are poor, I can kill and get away with it, that's the end of your law and order. That's the end of your democracy. Then it's a model for the rest of the country to follow. Why will it not spread to other states in the Northeast, to other states in India? Chief Minister, you won your election, right? The dominant group has voted for you, won your election. And the minority is dead. You won your election. Congratulations. Well done. And important also, it's important also, I guess, to note that there is a permanent minority here. With the 40 and 20 yeah. divide, there is also a clear permanent uh, minority here in terms of political representation. But I think, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Colin Gonzalez, uh, founder of the Human Rights Law Network, for... Uh, sharing all, all of those uh, views as well as the legal aspects of uh, the work that you have been doing. Uh, we hope, of course, that you are uh, wrong when it comes to a new wave or a new cycle of violence uh, starting up in Manipur. But for that to happen, uh, the government clearly needs to take some concrete steps. Uh, you've been watching News Click uh, from Imphal. Our attempts to report on this difficult, uh, complex situation from the state uh, will continue. Uh, like, subscribe, share and all of that of course. Uh, see you again. Stay safe. Goodbye.